Shalom. I am Jackie Master. Today is September 12th, the 23rd of Elul. After the destruction, Noah sought to correct the sin of Adam, who ate not the fruit of prophecy, which unites us to God, but the fruit of mere experience, which separates us from God. In the Noah narrative, one stream of thought in the Zohar now identifies the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil as grapes from the vine. The esoteric meaning of the story holds that the vine was exiled from Eden along with Adam. Noah had the vine and replanted it after the flood. He planted the vine and drank of the wine of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. According to the Zohar, when Noah came to examine the sin of Adam, he came not to cleave to it, but to understand it and to fix the world, but could not. And because of this, the Zohar continues, he became intoxicated with these su supernal matters and uncovered secrets of the world, creating breaches that had been closed. How often do we see someone with a cast on their foot using crutches and run to get the door for them or help them carry a package? How often do we do that for someone whose pain we cannot see? So many of us deal with private pain of some sort, be it physical, spiritual, or emotional. Yet we go through our lives with our outward face on. Many people deal with mental health issues on a daily basis, which can impact every aspect of their day-to-day -day life. For people with depression, social anxieties, or other mental health issues, the simplest of tasks can be absolutely debilitating. The result of these fears and anxieties is pulling away from the world when it isn't absolutely necessary to deal with others. The shame causes them to turn inward and keeps them from seeking help, leading to their issues being heightened. In this age of COVID, we are doubly masked, wearing a physical mask over our game face. The death of a loved one is also something that causes pain. At the beginning, people are there to console you, but there are those who feel they can determine when you should be over your grieving. For some, it takes months, some years, and some never get over it. So you stop talking about it and hold it inside, putting on your I'm fine face while keeping the pain inside. At this time of year, especially, memories of sitting around the table dipping apples and honey with our loved ones come flooding back. And this year in particular will be harder than most as we won't be able to have our extended families around us, leaving us feeling even more alone. Use this time of introspection leading up to Rosh Hashanah to gather up your courage. During the holy days, we come together, either masked and socially distanced in person or streaming services online and cry out in Psalm 27, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. By opening your heart to God, you can find the strength to reach out to others within your personal and temple community and take the risk of allowing them to see, despite a possibly happy exterior, how much you are really hurting inside. By taking a first step to share your pain, you can find a first step to healing. Because private pain is invisible, people do not think about it in others because they can't see it. Whenever you run across someone, reach out and be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. The Shana Tova Umetu Ka.